What's up everyone? I am Jamie with Three Little Goats Homestead and today we are in my kitchen because I have some extra milk which means it is time to make some cheese which I am very excited for. Today we are just making a good old-fashioned farmstead cheese. I'm using the recipe off of cheesemaking.com and we are using raw milk from our jerseys. Now if you don't have raw milk or don't have access to raw milk you can totally do this recipe with store-bought milk. Just make sure it's not ultra pasteurized when you buy it. So for this recipe, you're going to need a minimum of two gallons. Again, like I said, you can use store-bought milk. You're also going to need some rennet. You're gonna need some mesophilic culture. And then optional, I'm gonna be adding some Aneto coloring to mine because it is like a cheddar almost. And then if you are using store-bought milk, I would recommend picking up some calcium All right, You're gonna to wanna to get a nice, sturdy, heavy bottom pot. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just so it's big enough to actually hold all of your milk in. And we're going to start heating up our milk slowly. You're going to want to bring this to 88 degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to want to do this really slow. You don't want to risk burning your milk. Some people will do this over a double boiler or in a sink with really warm water. But I'm kind of impatient, so I just set my stove to low and just stir it. I don't have anything better to do, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to sit here and wait until we reach 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Alright, so this is actually getting pretty close to temp. I'm at about 86 and a half, well, 87 degrees Fahrenheit. So I know it's going to heat up to that 88 point by itself. So I'm going to actually pull this off of the heat before we add our culture in. All right, so I've got my little pack of mesophilic culture and I'm going to actually just sprinkle this on the top and I'm going to let it sit for about five minutes so it can rehydrate. All right, so this has been sitting for about five minutes. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to stir in that culture. And then we're gonna let it sit for 60 minutes undisturbed. All right, y'all, so it has been an hour, so I'm just gonna check my temperature and I'm gonna stir in any cream that's kind of floated to the top. We're sitting at 87.6, so it didn't drop too dramatically, which is fine. So now it is time to add in our rennet. I dilute my rennet in about a quarter cup of non-chlorinated water, so it's time to add that. So we're gonna add that in and then we're going to Stir this for about a minute. You don't want to stir it too long. I find about 45 seconds to a minute is perfect. Once everything is nice and incorporated, we're going to set our timer for 30 minutes. All right, y'all, so it has been 30 minutes. So we're going to check to see if we are ready to cut our cuts. To do that, I'm just going to see if I have a clean break. And I'm not white there yet. I want it to separate without being all jiggly like it is right now. So I'm going to let this sit for another five minutes or so and then we'll come back and check it again. All right so it's been a little bit longer and as you can see that is what we are looking for. We're looking for a nice clean break. So we're going to go ahead and cut our curds. For this particular recipe they say to cut them at about three eighths. You don't have to be like super precise on it. All right, so I let these rest for a few minutes so they could heal a little bit. And now I'm going to turn my heat back on to medium and I'm going to start cooking these curds down. And as I'm cooking them, I'm going to stir them and I'm going to be cutting up any extra super large curds that I couldn't get at the bottom. So I'm going to bring them up and cut them. And we're going to bring this up to, up to 102 degrees Fahrenheit. And we don't want to do this quickly. We want to do this about over a 45 minute time frame. So 
So when we come to that temperature, I will go ahead and bring you guys back. All right, so it has been about 30 minutes and we are sitting, getting pretty close to the 102 mark. So I'm gonna take this off the heat because it's going to continue to warm from the thermal mass. And then after that, we're going to actually let this sit for another hour in the way and we're going to stir it every 15 minutes just so it doesn't mat together. So for the next hour I'm going to come back every 15 minutes and just give it a little stir. And once we are done with that I will bring you guys back. Alright so it has been an hour and so I am going to go ahead and drain my curds. I have a pot down here because I want to save my whey because I'm going to make ricotta out of it. And then in here I have a colander and then some cheesecloth. I'm going to try to do this without making a huge mess because this is heavy. is full of weight as you can see so I'm just going to I'm going to take my clean sanitized cheesecloth I'm going to dip it back in this way that way <laughs> no pun intended we can get the rest of these curds out so this one's saturated I'm going to move this this heavy heavy pot back out of here so we can just get the rest of these curds because I'm pretty set on the amount of whey I have off of here and I can't really fit much more weight in that little pot so get these in here So I've got these on my drying rack in my sink. I'm going to let these set for about 30 minutes just to get some of this excess whey out. And while it's doing that, I'm going to go ahead and get everything ready for my cheese press. All right, so my hands are clean. So I'm going to combine both of these together. I'm just going to break these up a little bit because now we've got to salt all of these delicious, delicious curds. And I'm doing a 2% salting which I just weighed how much my curds weighed and then took 2% of that for the salt. So we're just gonna work this in with our hands. There's really no pretty way to do it. We're gonna get this all nice and mixed up. All right, so the salt is nice and mixed in. We're going to, I'm hoping I can get this all into this one mold. If not, I have a larger mold, but then I'll have to use a different press. I'm actually using press that my friend Erin made over at Heritage Homestead Creations. I think she has a video showing how she made it, if you're interested in that. But it, it doesn't quite fit my extra large mold. So we're going to see if we can get all of this cheesy goodness into this mold. We're going to do it in a cheesecloth from the other colander. And then we're just going to transfer it over, I guess, in chunks. See how that goes. And then we'll put our follower in, and I'm going to do my first press for an hour at 10 pounds and then I'll be pressing it for a total of 18 hours so once it comes out of the cheese press I will bring you guys back all right I had to switch cheese presses real quick just because my other one isn't tall enough for as high as this follower goes so we are going to, have to use this one for today Yes. 
so it has been well I put in the press last night so it's been at least a good 15 hours plus since this has been in the press I have taken it out a few times and flipped it so it is ready to come out to go on the drying rack Get her pulled out. All right. It's moved off to the side. And here she is. Oh, gorgeous. And it's heavy too. I will weigh it after it dries for a few days. But that is it. So I like to dry mine. I have just an old cookie sheet with some paper towels here and then a cheese mat. And I'm just going to sit it on here and then I'm going to just rotate it every couple of hours for the next two to three days until the edges get really hard. All right, y'all. So my cheese has been sitting out for about three days and I've got a nice rind on it. It's nice and dried out, which is exactly what I am looking for. So now it is time to package it up. Some people will wax their cheeses. I don't just because I don't have the patience to wax, nor do I really like dealing with it because I'm just using a small like college room refrigerator for my cheese cave. So I don't like stacking wax cheeses on top of each other. So we're going to vacuum seal ours. Sealed up. We're going to just label our cheese. I like to put the date that I made it, which was January. What is today's date? 10th. And I'll check on it in 60 days. I believe this recipe says it's ready in 30, but I just find waiting a little bit extra time just gives it a little bit more flavor so into the cheesecake we go with this one so like I said I just use a little mini fridge that I keep all my cheeses in there's not much in here because I haven't been able to make cheese in a while and we've been eating through it but I'm just going to set this in here and we will check on it in a few weeks that'll probably be a completely separate video because it's a long time to wait to put out a video and I'll probably lose the footage if I have to wait that long all right, y'all, so uh, future editing Jamie here. I lost my outro for this video because I take forever to edit anything. My bad. So this is the outro. So if you guys liked this type of video of making cheese, let me know down in the comments below and I will try to make more cheese making videos in the future. And if you like this video in general, just give it a big thumbs up and hit subscribe. And I guess we will see you guys in the next one. Bye.